Welcome to Bike Week Radio Show. Powered by Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Bike Week Radio Show with Bobby Woldridge, Brock Glover, and Paul Carruthers on San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Good morning and welcome into Bike Week Radio Show on San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty 1090. Thank you so much for checking us out on 1090 AM. Or, special shout out to those listening through the brand new handy dandy Bike Week Radio Show what an smartphone app. app. Epic Phil Kotner. That was his project. Get us proud. I love that thing. And it's so easy to use. It's fun. It's functional. And it's got the four most important shows. The last three and our best of 2014 show. There you go. So if you haven't downloaded that yet, it uh, iPhone and what's, what's the other one? It works, it works for? Well, it <laughs> works for the Mac OS, you know, iPhone system, and it also works for Android. There you go. But you can find it on the Google Play Store. That's free of charge. Free of charge. Scott Cox is footing the bill, so you might as well take him That's up right. on that. Run me up. <laughs> In studio, packed house, Paul Carruthers once again here. Paul, good to see you, buddy. Nice to be here. It was a nice little drive down today, and uh, I thought of you and Scott when I passed Trestles because it looked like it would have been a little bit of fun. Oh, man, it was. And last night, Scott Wallenberg and I, from the Scott Wallenberg visiting, sessioning in with the Bike Week Radio Show band, who mm-hmm. you'll hear in a minute, we drove by there, and it was just head high, hollow, offshore breeze. Unbelievable. Then it was buzzkill, though, because it quickly went down to one lane because they were doing construction. <laughs> so even though it was 7 in the morning, it was uh, a little bit of traffic. But should have been on your bike. I should have been, actually. It would have been a nice day to ride down here. And obviously, Scott Cox is here, and he's updating that Bike Week Radio Show Facebook page. While we and speak. so you must, must follow that. And also, Scott Wallenberg in studio, Racer X. And like you said, he'll be handling our intros and outro music as his band Blues Addicts will... Uh, that's a nice little I'm amazed going. we got all those guys in here. Even even um, Mikhail, his horn player's here. <laughs> Packed house. Also here, Jeff Tilton. And uh, Jeff will be co-hosting sitting in because Brock Glover's on the phone. So Jeff is essentially pitch hitting for Brock, which, you know. Local boy. Mm-hmm. So I get to fight with Jeff in. today or what? Yeah. <laughs> and he's got a new baby girl. So, so Jeff, I mean... You were up anyway, right? Aren't yeah, you up all night? Changing absolutely. diapers Thanks for and having stuff? me. Yeah, it's, um, last couple months have been a lot of fun, a little bit lacking on sleep, but uh, all good. Got a lot of um, big shoes to fill. Well, we brewed with, up uh, a nice trust pot. Me, you'll lose Brock's sleep pot. for the rest of your life <laughs> over those kids. <laughs> we yeah. brewed, up, brewed up a hearty pot of Bike Week Radio Show mud for you to enjoy in the kitchen there. Well, let's just jump right into it. Here is the news with Paul Carruthers. Nobody knows the news better than Bike Week Radio Show. This was an age when only men were allowed to read the news. And only Bike Week Radio Show has Paul Carruthers. See, I'm here. Okay. We can do the news now. It's all right, everyone. We can, we can do the news. Hold on. Everyone, why are we all standing around? Let's go. Well, there was a little super cross last night in Oakland Coliseum. I don't know what they call it now. I don't know. The latest sponsor is the Black Hole. It's still the home of those freaking yeah. crappy Raiders that we all hate. But uh, it was uh, it was a good night for Supercross. It was a good night to see that uh, our little Black Flag Gate incident from a week ago was sort of put to rest. Uh, it was nice to see that the two riders involved in the in the Black Flag incident um, both landed on the podium. Uh, Trey Kennard won the race. Ryan Dungey was second, and Chad Reed ended up third. So it was... Uh, and he, he led for a while. you got to hit that. No, he did. He, yeah. he did lead for a while, and, and he was wearing his green and gold Australian sporting colors for... In honor of? In honor of Australia Day, which is the, today there, tomorrow here, if that makes sense, because yeah. they're so far I ahead. That. Australians hours, are right? always far ahead. I don't know why. <laughs> Good, Bobby. Very good. Well, happy Australia Day to you, Paul. Well, thank you. Well, are you celebrated in while the Australians are celebrating, or are you celebrated tomorrow? Well, we do both. Two day celebration. Twice as much beer. <laughs> well, happy Australia Day to you, to you fine folks. Mate. So the um, the Supercross. Back to the Supercross. And yeah, there we go. Tone that down a little bit. There we go. Back yes. to the Supercross. Um, it, the race itself was it was outstanding. Um, I, I think nobody can be upset when Trey Kennard wins because I think he's such a likable 
down to earth, good Com- kid. Completely like And uh, and given the fact of of his incident last week with Chad Reed, I think that made people even want him to win. Maybe even more. maybe he liked him so much he just wanted to ride right next to him. And I thought on the podium that those guys would you know hug and stuff, but it still they looked shook like hands, you know Trey. Yeah, but it was kind of like a force like. And I think Trey was like being the nice guy, and, and Chad was totally kind of. Was. N- n- well, he so. went over there just to remind him, "Hey, I won this week." Right, and you didn't. Yeah. Anyhow, the uh, the championship chase kind of got flipped around a little bit because uh, Ken Roxon had a scary crash uh, when he came up short on a triple. I, I we talked about it earlier in the room there, and it's. I mean, it, he was very short. That was a sky and, shot, and that, I, he was, that was short. That was reminiscent of. Evil Knievel Snake River Jump Sky Cycle. Yes. With a Supercross track. Except he didn't have a parachute. Yeah, no parachute. But he, uh, you could tell, I mean, he, he, knew in, he knew right away he was in trouble because he was looking behind him to see, you know, who was going to land on his back. And fortunately, it was, uh, he went down by himself. It looked like he smashed his face a little bit. Um, and I think that probably scared him more than anything because he did stay down for a while. And it looked, for, it looked like he was going to be not coming back. I felt but, it in my living room. He did come back, and he rode to fifteenth, which uh, which may pay dividends later in the season when they start adding these points up, and things are going to be tight, and those may be the points that could uh, could end up winning him a championship at at the end of the year. So, um, at this point, Ryan Dungey, who's I believe has been on the podium at every single round, uh, he took over the title chase, uh, points lead by four over Roxon, and Kennard made a bit of a jump uh, to third. Uh, he's fourteen points behind. Tomac, who was fourth in the race, is uh, another four points behind Kennard, but I think he probably, more than anybody, um, you know, at least w- with his bad Anaheim one, um, this with Roxon having a bad race, it at least allowed Tomac to kind of feel like do a little catch up. Yeah, he's back in this thing. Uh, the two fifty race, we also had another popular winner with Malcolm Stewart winning that race. It was his first ever two fifty Supercross win. And uh, he was good on the podium, you know, saying it, it, he wishes his brother was there, who's yeah. obviously James. And uh, so it was, it was kind of nice to see. But again, I think that the, the, the rider of the whole race for me was, um, was Cooper Webb. I mean, this kid is like, we talked about it again in, in the back room, and it's, it takes you back to a time when, when a guy like a Ricky Johnson, for example, was good enough that he could start anywhere and kind of work his way through yeah, the field. And Cooper, to the front. Yeah, and Cooper Webb seems to have that speed over the rest of these guys that allows him to do that. Uh, the reason he was uh, he, he had to come from behind was he, he took a pretty big hit from his, uh, from his buddy Tyler Bowers. Uh, I, think it, uh, I think that might have ended their bromance a little bit. Or like you said yeah. in the back, they're probably not carpooling to the next race. But uh, you could tell uh, he, he was... He was for the want of a better word, pissed at uh Yeah, he said, I wish I could cuss up here. Because really if that didn't happen, I mean he I could th- cuss here if he was here with us. I think he would have been hard to uh to beat. So he probably feels like his buddy Tyler uh cost him a race win there, but he still fought through and finished second and Alex Martin was third and Bowers ended up fourth. But uh it was a pretty big hit. I mean they um no black flag, but none. It was a racing incident. There was no you, retaliation. You, you overpronunciate pronunciate that L, which is good. Otherwise, we'd have... Flag? Yeah. Otherwise, the, the black flag. Otherwise, yeah, if you, you rush through that, we'd have racist calls. We'd yeah, have, that wouldn't be you know, good. All sorts of troubles. We don't do that here in, on so Bike Week. Well we done. stay away from that. Yes. So anyway, all in all, um, you know, I had some people at the house last night, and not all of them are Supercross fans, but uh, it's a great show, and by the end of the night, that they're all Supercross really, fans. That so. was a really good uh, And I first, look like a hero in front of my friends because I said that uh, Kennard was going to win, and he did. So, But he's hard to pick against at this point because if you look at the, the previous races, he hasn't had good starts, but he's always that guy that's able to go forward where a lot of them go backwards. And uh, I think he's going to be, um, I think he's again going to be a guy to be reckoned with for the remainder of the season. Do we have Brock online? Our wonderful producer, Adam Clark, was able to do something almost no one could do during Brock's racing careers, track him down and catch up with him. Is, and that, finally is that why he's holding him. the uh, coat hanger over his head? <laughs> well, Brock, who was actually at the event, can probably give us a little background information that might uh, make this entire thing even more interesting. <laughs> yes, I'm driving around beautiful Hollister Hills Off-Road Vehicle Park where our green stick money has done a great job. And I'm actually at the, the Grand Prix track, they call it, um, which I actually haven't been here since the last 
U.S. Grand Prix, and I believe that was about 1988. How'd you do yeah. in that one, Brockster? You know what? I One of the weirdest racing incidents I've ever had in my life. Uh, while leading the race in a Grand Prix, on a 500 Grand Prix, coming around a corner, I guess I didn't look up far enough through the corner or something, but I was uh, probably pinned in third or fourth gear on Oak Mike to a fast-sweeping corner to head up the big uphill they had here. And before, I, when I looked up, Within about a half a blink of an eye, I had just enough time to realize that that hay bale somebody had clipped from the top of the hill was rolling down like at full speed, and I was going the opposite direction at full speed. And uh, I was cleaned out while winning the, <laughs> leading the race by a hay bale. And it was a, uh, imagine a hay bale rolling down a very steep hill and a uh, rider hitting it head on, and that's what happened to me. And it was... Uh, Still, one of the weirdest racing accidents I've ever uh, experienced during a race, but uh, but that's not why we're here talking. We're talking about the race, and I was I like the hay bale. I'm still laughing at Cooper Webb's comments, and I don't know if it came over on TV. So tell me, and I'll shut up if it, if it did. But when he was up on the podium, he mentioned that uh, yeah, I got an okay start with working my way through the pack and going towards the front when. Uh, when uh, Tyler Bowers hacked off my front end, I got going again, and then I passed him and made him look like a little boy. <laughs> we heard that on TV last night. <laughs> I think we all were standing on the ground. We just looked at each other because about half the people didn't hear it, and half the people did hear it, and we're like, the ones that heard it were, did he really just say that? And it's kind of funny because Tyler Bowers can play linebacker in most uh, you know, <laughs> Division two colleges. And uh, Cooper Webb's about five foot three or four. You know, he's a scrappy kid, and he rides like the he rides the heck out of a motorcycle. But there's certainly a big discrepancy in physical size. So, um, you know, and clearly, as Paul was saying, he's the class of the field when it comes to speed, and it's it's so much fun to watch him ride. And and you know, to be honest, last night I think he would have had three more corners or four more corners. He would have won because uh, he was you know he was closing. On, yeah, he was closing, and he was amazing in what was the first corner. Do you remember the check, the corner that had the sand in it? Yeah, that, we love uh, that right corner. Hander? Yeah, that next corner was a real tricky flat corner, and uh, Cooper Webb was just, he was riding the inside line and, and, and on rails and just seemed to be able to apply so much more throttle than everybody else without sliding out. So he uh, made me a believer in either his bike setup, his skills, or uh, maybe his tires. But regardless, he was uh, phenomenal. So that is corner. he on Pirelli's? Or? Uh, no, he wasn't, actually. He was on Dunlop. Oh. And, uh, yeah, yeah, amazing, <laughs> amazing. So uh, as is pretty much everybody else in that 250 plus, I think there was everybody but one one guy who finished the distance back. But uh, exciting racing, no question about it. Fun to watch. Great popular win for Malcolm Stewart. And, you know, it, it, I think we mentioned this earlier on the pre-show, but, uh, you know, afterwards, you know, Malcolm, or, uh, uh, Tim Stewart Sr. is a huge Oakland Raiders fan, and he's just a diehard Raiders fan. Literally and just, and Yeah, he just loves the Raiders. And even though he's from Florida, he loves the Raiders. And so I always tease him being a Charger fan. You know, we always rib. And afterwards, I said, boy, your team kind of sucks. But you know what? Your kids can sure ride this stadium like nobody. nobody. But, you know, both of his kids have won at that stadium. I remember when James came over on the JGR Yamaha back, and that was one of James' first wins. I think it was his first win on JGR. And and uh, so it was. Uh, it's kind of fun to see both Stewart kids win in the same stadium like that. Hey, Brock, so talk, about, talk about those sand corners because, you know, Scott Wallenberg and I and Pat Cox were watching the race last night. I love that kind of stuff. And, you know, Jason Anderson was just blasting that thing, and I really got a kick out of of uh, Justin Hill trying to, like, bunny hop into it, and he hit what the Dakar riders would refer to as fesh fesh, which is yeah. just like talcum powder or just stopped yeah. the front wheel and kind of stopped it, it his was forward filthy. momentum. And then when they prepped the track, they put a great big bump on the inside so that what happens in sand, it just that bump gets bigger and it – keeps the inside line from being the fast line and it just gets you know if they did a great job considering the sand corner to have an outside like they did people were able to make passes from the outside or the inside so they did a great job of designing that the best part that i liked about it was that oakland for all those old school guys remember way back in the late 70s when the famous paddle tire incident when the, the paddle tire rule Basically, the paddle tire became outlawed was based on an Oakland Supercross race because when they raced this race, uh, the stadium back in the late 70s, 
it routinely rained up here during the winter. And for some reason, we've been lucky the last two or three, four years because we've only had a, one little bit of rain at one race in the last. But break know, it down for years. people that may not be familiar. I mean, it's it's familiar because so, we're close to it. Yeah. But tell us about what that paddle tire incident involved. Well, we you know we had a recording night where we were gonna you know with Steve Johnson, the Kawasaki one of the team managers at the time, uh, and that was the bike. It was Jimmy Weinert had. Uh, they got they had gotten wind that everybody you know saying hey go into Oakland in you know January and in and, and February of the year it's always raining up there it's just kind of normal so they got tired of having the tracks just be a mess and they said well they got this great idea where they were going to primarily have a fan supercross track it's like going to Belgium or Holland in the Grand Prix where well, we're going to have a whole the whole track's going to be basically sand and it's going to be a supercross race so. Somebody at Kawasaki got a great idea. There's a little conflicting stories of whose original idea it was, Roy Turner's or Steve Johnson's. But regardless, I know Steve had been down at Glamis, and he had seen some tires with vulcanized paddles on them and supposedly made a trip down to what was called Dick Cepec, which was a big off-road uh, company back in the L.A. area, and talked to him about vulcanizing paddles on the center of, the, of a motocross tire, which they did. And there were some great stories about how they went out. They didn't even put it on until the final practice. He went out, did a couple of starts, made about three or four laps on the thing, big old rooster tail flying where the guys behind him couldn't even see, and then, you know, raced back to the truck and took the tire and wheel off real fast, put a standard knobby back on the bike, and then when everybody came running over to see what the heck was that on the Weiner's bike, everybody's like, well, what are you talking about? And then he raced with it in the race, won, or raced with it in the race, won the race, and soon the uh, next week in that battle tire was outlawed. But, uh, uh, you know, they, they basically say anybody behind it couldn't see, and it was not good fair racing. So you know, then to have sand on the track in kind of a little little piece of history, just a little nugget thrown in a corner like that was kind of a, a, a neat thing for the old school people that remembered the, the old famous uh, paddle tire incident in Oakland Coliseum right at the stadium there. So, but um, other than that, in the 250 class, or the 450 class, and kind of behind the Reed black flag thing, now you're a little bit of more controversy coming along. We'd heard about this brewing a little bit. You know, Alden Baker, the famous trainer for the Carmichael, you know, has just really had the only perfect seasons as a trainer. He's done a great job. He's worked with guys like James Stewart when he had his perfect season. Um, since then, James hasn't won a championship since they parted ways. You know, Carmichael had a lot of success with him. And then now, recently, uh, you know, Villapoto's had a lot of success with him. Well, Alden has now kind of taken over. He still works with Villapoto, but on a smaller basis since Ryan's going to be riding the Grand Prix in Europe. Um, but he took over Ken Roxon's program. Well, Ken certainly, you know, it's arguably he has improved a lot under Al- Alden's, you know, care. And all of a sudden now the scuttlebutt is that he wasn't really following Alden's program to the T. And Alden just said, hey, look, you know, if you're not going to follow what I'm saying, we're going to have this conflict, I'm basically going to fire you. So they parted ways this week, supposedly. So the client fired the customer. Well, kind of, yeah, it's, you know, Alvin's in a position that's like, look, you buy into my method or you don't buy into my method. Well, supposedly Ken Roxon and his father, who have had a tumultuous uh, uh, relationship in the past, it's a little bit, it's kind of odd. They're both strong-willed people, and they both have their own strong opinions, but they do believe in racing should be fun, and it doesn't have to be a complete grind seven days a week, uh, you know, 24-7, basically. And Ken was kind of wanting to do, along with his dad, believe that he should work real hard for about four days a week, and the other three days a week he should kind of just do what he wants, and that should be enough. And I think the <laughs> negotiations were maybe six days a week and one day off, but then it just became, a, you know, an issue too much that they did, that the divide was too wide, they couldn't come together with it. So now Ryan Dungey has now switched camps and instead of training at the Ricky Carmichael facility, kind of with Jeannie Carmichael sort of overlooking it a little bit, now Ryan Dungey is going into Alden Baker's program, which is more kind of where the Villapoto and, and the uh, Adam Cicerella group all comes out of, and I think Jason Anderson too. And now Roxon's going to go up to Ricky Carmichael, hence, you know, he writes for the Ricky Carmichael, the RCH team. So they're swapping places, which so it's going to be interesting to see how this all works out, especially if Roxon has a little bit of an injury he has to bounce back from. So, so it's cool. training gate now. Yeah, it is. It's, it's you know, it's, it's 
it's kind of big time, you know. I mean, that it works with everybody. You know, you've got guys like Justin Barsha. You know, he's working full time with Johnny O'Mara, and Johnny O'Mara spent a lot of time down in Florida with him. You know, um, Cole Seeley works with Jeff Ward, and you know they've had that relationship since the Troy Lee relation. You know, Jeff is good friends with Troy Lee at Troy Lee Designs, and who knows? I don't even know. Maybe Troy Lee pays Jeff to do it. I don't know, but it's just kind of interesting how each of these guys have a lot of trainers. Obviously, Eli Tomac works with his father, John Tomac, and and so you know. It, it does matter. I mean, it seems to make a big difference to get these guys on the right program. And, and you see, you know, you see a lot of them come around with success, and then you see a lot of them who, you know, to me, sometimes the trainer is just a crutch for the lack of motivation some of the riders have to work hard. So it's just that's why uh, I don't train religiously. Well, it, I don't want to get it, involved in all that. Ken Roxon. Yeah, Ken Roxon just posted a photo of his face on Instagram. It, I mean, it's not too bad. It looks like he got into a little bit of a fight. But he said, I just yeah. wish I would have got up and kept going right away. I just thought something was wrong with my face. It took a while, and I'm surprised my wrists don't hurt. Luckily, I got balls of steel. Oh, okay. Self-admitted. <laughs> well, is he talking about his, the ball bearing in the steering head of his bike, or what's he talking about? Oh, okay. So, so you know, behind-the-scenes stuff, it's always kind of a lot of fun. You know, you, you get back there and you figure out, you know, what's happening and, uh, you know, who's doing what and, and the dynamics behind before the gate ever hits the the starting line there and it, it was just uh you know it's just always those things behind the scene that happen and and uh you know we had a little incident even from the tire situation this week you know uh brett metcalf a very likable australian that we've always you know helped and supported you know he switched tires to pirelli this week you know and it's like well what what, what, what drove that and and from our side of things it was kind of odd because the team owner you know said to us that he wanted to have all of his riders on the exact same tires. I mean, he has three riders. He has a, a guy named Robert Lynn from Sweden. He has a guy named Ronnie Stewart uh, from back east. And neither of the riders have ever made a main event this year. And we we're like, well, I don't know. You know, Brett's riding on, you know, some, sometimes Brett rides on standard tires. Sometimes he rides on development tires. You know, we can't really give him factory tires to these other guys that aren't making the main events, you know, we're kind of stretching it to give Brett because he's a privateer program. It's not really much of a team, or or it's a smaller team. I want to say, Rockstar, and, I'm gonna we're gonna jump yeah. into you. We're we're going up against a programmed hard break, okay. but no uh, you need no. to go out there and do that ride with all those brand new KTM's and Hollister mm -hmm. Hills. You got it. I'll take care of that. But I was just saying on the Brett Metcalf thing. So that so there's always things behind the scenes that happen. So you know we weren't able to do what the team owner wanted, so they jump ship. So yeah. the politics and racing and behind-the-scenes stuff is a lot of fun. So and we love you guys it. have a great show, and Thanks, uh, I'll be listening to the uh, the rest of it on the on our archives this week. Ride Get fast, take chances. <laughs> I'll stay safe. How's that? Okay. Hey, buddy. And See if you ya. got right. questions, text Scott, because I know you you would love to be in your studio with uh, Jeff Tilton, but uh, I know you're out on the road. You'll be friend. able to listen to the to the Bike Week Radio Show mm -hmm. app as soon as he's done riding today. <laughs> Especially when it was my idea to bring him on the show, and I don't even get to be there. So, Jeff, have a good show. Take care, everybody. Next week, we are back in Anaheim. Thanks, Rox. See you soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, also... I want to uh, remind you guys, our good friends up at Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys, who will be making some appearances, Bike Week Radio Shows on the road coming up as That's Supercross right. inches oh, yeah. back towards San Diego. Guess what? We have some appearances coming up. We always bring Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys with us, and so we'll let you know where we're going to be on our events calendar coming up later in the show. But here's one of those helpful writing hints from our good friends at Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys have been representing riders for decades. And here's Chuck Coro from Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys to provide you with a helpful writing hint. When you're involved in a lawsuit, you'll probably have your deposition taken. Your lawyer will prepare you. Beyond the substance of issues, you are being evaluated by the other lawyer as to how a jury will see you. Don't argue with the other lawyer. Don't have an attitude. Don't treat your case as a vendetta against the other person. Many cases are lost on how the jury perceives the parties. Juries don't like angry people with attitudes. This helpful hint was brought to you by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys at 1-800-4-BIKERS or online at russbrown.com. Hi, James here from Toyota of Escondido. Guys, if you're hearing this commercial, that means you are into powerful machines that go fast and are durable. Toyota of Escondido has the biggest selection in San Diego of Toyota Tacomas and Toyota Tundras. Whether for work or play, we can customize the truck of your choice into the truck of your dreams. Don't waste time anywhere else. Stop by or give us a call. Toyota of Escondido. Toyota of Escondido. 
Freeway close where Highway 78 meets Broadway, just east of the 15. Here's an idea. Bear with me. You could save quite a bit of money just by switching your motorcycle insurance to GEICO. Piles of it, in fact. But there may not be a lot of room on your bike for all that extra cash. So I had somewhat of an idea. You could get one of those nifty little sidecars, pile it up with all that money you just saved, and merrily drive on your way. It's just a thought. Just off the top of me head. Call GEICO today for a free motorcycle rate quote. GEICO, saving people money on more than just car insurance. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys are the real deal. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. Their entire practice is dedicated to representing motorcyclists. As riders themselves, they understand why you ride, the issues you face, and the motorcycle culture. For over 30 years, Russ Brown and his partner Chuck Coro have been helping injured motorcyclists and their families get the care and compensation they deserve. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys also created BAM. BAM! A nationwide buddy system of over 2 million riders helping riders in the event of a roadside emergency. BAM offers free legal advice, and thanks to Russ Brown, they have staff on hand to take your call 24-7, 365 days a year. Imagine a real person answering the phone 24-7. Just call 1-800-4-BIKERS for more information and to get your BAM card today. If you go down, call Russ Brown, 1-800-4-BIKERS, and online at russbrown.com. The negotiation begins the minute you walk in the door, Frank. Jerry, I'm going to Toyota Carlsbad for my new Toyota. I don't have to worry. No, of... brother, walk in with that attitude. You're dead meat. Yeah, I don't think that's First the First thing when you walk in, what? walk out. Jerry, You what? come back the next day, just walk right in, walk right out. <sighs> look, come back a week later, look him right in the eye and say... I'd like to buy a car. No, walk out. Jerry, does this explain why you don't own a car? You made me forget, was I in or out? You're out. Walk into big savings today on new Toyotas at Toyota Carlsbad. Toyota Carlsbad. You're listening to Bike Week Radio Show with Bobby Woldridge, Brock Glover, and Paul Carruthers on San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back Bike Week Radio Show, San Diego sports leader, mighty 1090. Dig that. Huh? That jam right there. Scott Wallenberg from Racer X, handling our house band. He's got a slide on his finger right now. <laughs> the Blues Addicts, L- a.k.a. the it's Bike Week Radio Show house band. Wallenberg's got some vibes on that boy. <laughs> also in studio, Jeff Tilton, freestyle motocross pioneer, on, as well as doing some great work with our local Marine Corps and teaching them really how to ride work. their bikes properly. Very important work. Keeping them upright. So very, very important work. And uh, Jeff, thanks again for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Good music going here. Good way to start the Sunday. <laughs> and so, uh, Jeff, just tell us a little bit about how you got involved with the Marines and uh, and what you do for anybody who doesn't know the backstory. Yeah, long story short, um, been riding motorcycles since I was eight years old, so going on 30 years now. Uh, raced, did freestyle, and then got into event production. And in 2009, um, the Marine Corps came to myself and a couple of my partners and they wanted some help with their, their motorcycle problems. Basically, in 2009, 25 Marines died in motorcycle crashes, which is more than died in combat. Mm. So we kind of, you know, took a look at what was going on, what the problem was, and, and how we could help. And the first thing that we came up with was awareness, you know. So we made a movie, had all the, the sports top riders, everyone from um, James Stewart, um, Jeremy McGrath, Ben Bostrom, uh, Josh Heron, you know, kind of across uh, the board of, you know, the – top riders in the sport to get messages basically to try and get these marines to make better decisions when they got into the sport so maybe instead of getting a thousand cc sport bike for their first bike maybe they get a an off-road bike and start there versus going out on the streets you know the first time so we did that the movie was great and then um uh, the guys we work with at headquarters marine corps said what can you do about our training you know we feel that we could do better so basically, you know, we looked at what was existing, which is motorcycle safety foundation classes, which are great starting point. But you need more really to ride these big, powerful motorcycles, whether it's on the street or the dirt. So we looked at different opportunities for what we call advanced training, and it's been successful. We work with American Super Camp, Star School. We do off-road events with you know pro riders. Ivan Tedesco was an instructor at our last one. So. Yeah, it's been been great, and we've been able to reduce the fatalities by about forty percent over the last five years. Fantastic, and uh, the, I think the the stat that really popped out to probably all of our listeners too is that two thousand nine, yeah, more people died on their bikes than in combat. Yeah, it's just you know crazy that 
they go to where they have to go, whether it's, you know, Iraq or Afghanistan or wherever, and they survive, you know, all that conflict that they have to deal with over there. And then they come back and, you know, unfortunately lose their life on a motorcycle, which is, you know, kind of needless. So we've, um, you know, taken this pa- this project, you know, very passionately and you know i feel very strongly about what we're doing and to be able to work with the marine corps and you know we've worked with all the branches in one capacity or the other is really important you know i take it very seriously and it's a lot of great guys you know in, in the marine corps it's funny you know we talk about oh, the military is great we support it but you know throughout my whole career you always say that you know and you mm-hmm. do but i never really got the appreciation until i started working with them you know directly a, yeah a day-to-day yeah. basis and you know going on to the different bases and watching them train and hearing their stories of a, a whole new appreciation for what our military, especially our Marine Corps, does, you know, for the country. Jeff, give us an idea. So when you go and, you know, you're going to be at Miramar next week, are there levels of training? Or you know, when you first go in front of a group, you give them some sort of a presentation, give our listeners an idea of, of what takes place? It, it's, it kind of varies on what we're doing, whether it's actual on-bike training or awareness training. But kind of the, the core philosophy is – we try and bring in the best riders and the best instructors to to train these guys. You know, they're they're younger. You know, the tar- target demographic there is, you know, probably around 23, 24 years old. So to me, you need credible instructors, not just someone who knows how to teach a, a class or read, you know, a book and say, do this, do that. You need to be able to show them how to do it. So that's really what we do. You know, I kind of give a little bit of background, you know, on my riding sure. career and experience. And then basically, I let all the and give the us, you know, just t- take, take a, over. Take a second and give us your background. Tell us, tell the listeners about how you yeah. became involved in motorcycles and how you found yourself. Yeah, I'm an East County guy. Situation. Grew up in the Cone Zone, you know, kind of uh, looking up to Brock and Rick Johnson, and you know, all those guys started racing in uh, at Barona Oaks in 1984. And then, you know, kind of grew up doing all the the SoCal, the Golden State Nationals, and TransCal, and all that. Turned pro 96, 97, raced Supercross in the Outdoor Nationals. A little bit of success, you know, got a national number, made a 250 main. And then uh, at that point, freestyle motocross was starting to, you know, become a sport. Yeah. And uh, kind of got into that and, you know, did all right and, you know, kept growing with it. I was able to see some business opportunities, so we built some, uh, myself and Tommy Clowers, built some portable ramps and started TNT Putting Action shows Sports. On. Yeah, so we've been doing that for 12, 13 years. We've done, and you know, Tommy's well still over. involved with you? Doing yeah, TNT? he's kind of more of a silent partner. He's kind of moved on from, from being a freestyle motocross rider into, you know, the real world. But, yeah, no, he's definitely a part of it. And, yeah, we had a, a lot of fun. You know, me and him rode the shows together for, you know, yeah. good 10 yeah, years. Yeah, we talked about it because yeah. last time we did something together, I think it was in Cleveland yeah. for a supermoto race, and, and you and Tommy came out and dazzled the crowd. Yeah, that was, uh, I think Tommy won the X Games gold medal the night before and took a red eye yeah. to Cleveland. And we were, Which we were, we were happy riding for. in Cleveland the next yeah. day. It was, so that was, that was, was really good. cool. Yeah, it was really special for us. So, yeah, I've been riding motorcycles for a long time. I love it, and it's really cool to be able to, you know, take some of my knowledge and experience and pass it over to um, these Marines or, you know, whoever needs it. It's, it's really exciting to be able to do that. And during the course of a year, how many Marines will you interact with? It varies a little bit, but, you know, we've probably averaged over the last five years, you know, somewhere around on bike, two, 3,000 Marines, you know, wow. per year. So, yeah, we have a – we're trying to, you know, do as many as possible. And, and truthfully, it's not enough, you know, in my opinion – Every one of these Marines who ride a motorcycle should have some sort of, you know, advanced training every year to, you know, because we all ride motorcycles. You never stop learning. So, you know, that's kind of the goal is to give these guys really good training opportunities that not, you know, it's not just going around in a circle in a parking lot. It's going out to a track or, you know, listening to some of the most accomplished riders in the sport, give them advice. So the one you have coming up this week, it's with Danny Walker's American Super Camp. Yeah. So you actually bring the track to them, and they ride like the, the little Yamahas? Yeah, American Super Camp is so cool. So, yeah, we do it on base. Luckily with American Super Camp, it's flat track techniques on TTR Yamaha, TTR on 25, so it doesn't take a whole lot of space. So, yeah, we got some dirt area. We'll go in there. Uh, Danny's got a little tractor, you know, prep the area, water it, get it all ready to go. And then, yeah, American Super Camp, they provide all the riding gear, the motorcycles, everything. So... The way I explain American Super Camp is it's kind of like crossover training. 
because on a street bike, in any training that you do, you can never get the motorcycle out of control. Well, you don't want to. Yeah, anymore. yeah, and, and learn how to recover it, you know, safely without huge repercussions. So with American Super Camp, we go out there and on the little TTR 125s with a slick back tire and, you know, get them all sideways and, and start showing them how to recover the motorcycle. And, and once they start getting some confidence, we take it away. We get the track, you know, right. super muddy and, you know, once they they – have a, a grasp of what they're doing, we make it even more difficult. And that's just to emphasize basic ba- bike handling skills. Bike control, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's no better way. And a lot of those guys, if they started riding on dirt, would probably be, they'd be a lot better street bike riders anyway. What, how, is there a lot of guys, is the majority of them have probably not ridden on the dirt, would you say? Yeah, typically at American Super Camp, I'd say it's probably 75% never rode on the dirt before. And so that's going to be fun to watch for the first half hour. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. Don't, yeah, they don't have any fun <laughs> laughing at their buddies, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a hoot for sure. You know, yeah, people are screaming and yelling, especially during the mud drill. Yeah, it's a full comedy show out there. But at the same time, it's, it's safe and it's making them better riders. And what's re- another cool thing about American Super Camp is just the – the resume of some of the riders, you know, Chris Carr is one of the, the owner's instructors. I think he's probably a seven-time flat track national yeah. champion. World uh, speed record holder among Yeah. Party, and super nice guy. Yeah. And then uh, Jake Gagne is going to be out there. He won the 600 uh, road race class last year. And Josh Hayes, who's a multi, multi-time AMA uh, super bike champion. So a lot of And he's a multi-time Bike Week Radio Show <laughs> yeah. co-host. So a lot of great guys and, you know, giving back to support the Marine Corps. Really nice. So this week you'll be at Miramar Naval Air Station, or actually it's Marine Air Station. Marine Corps I grew Air up Station. next to it. It was the Naval Air Station Top Gun School. But you'll be out there. How many? Uh, how many guys will you help out this week? Yeah, Super Camp. We do. We can put thirty riders through it. It's a two day school, so not a huge number. But those thirty riders leave there. Uh, like it's crazy to watch the steps that they take they leave they're such a better rider so you know we feel confident that when they leave there you know with their the skills that they learned and all that that they're better set up for success out on the street or wherever they're going to be riding so you know ultimately we want to continue to do this where yeah it's only 30 at a time but you know if we could do you know 50 of those a year you know are there things you see do you help them like set up their bike i mean what are some of the common things that you might see uh a uh, young Marine, you know, he's got a uh, sport bike. Are there, you, you tell them about setting up their bike and basic techniques. I mean, what are some of the things you look for that you, you're pretty confident, even before you meet these guys, you're going to fix this and that, and the guy's going to go home feeling like, wow, this was totally worth my time because I learned this. You know, thing. it's definitely not bike setup. We wish we had more time to to get into that level, but, you know, we're really – you know, we have a short time frame, a day or two typically to, to work with these guys. So, you know, what we're looking at is the stuff that can save their life, you know, how to, to stop the motorcycle as quick as possible, how to, you know, be in the right position, right gear, right body position to be able to go through a corner correctly. So one of the things that we do a lot with, especially the sport bike riders, is take them out to a track, you know, to whether it's Chuck Walla or BIR on the East Coast, Virginia International Raceway. And we work with whether it's Star School or California Superbike School or Total Control, you know, one of those training providers that has the experience to go out to these big tracks and, and let the guys ride their sport bikes there because it's a controlled environment. There's no guardrails. Right, they're not going to get hit by a car. Yeah, there's no cars, oncoming traffic. And so, you know, a sport bike goes 180, 200 yeah. miles an hour. And, you know, you don't Stuck. buy it. You don't buy it to go ride it at 65. We're not going to bury our heads in the sand to say okay you know just don't speed that's that's not going to save their lives you know so it's it's more about you know letting them learn in a controlled environment if they want to go fast they can go fast but you know they're working with whether it's jason pridmore or the codes or you know whoever it is you know they they work with sport bike experts and that's that's a result of you interacting with these guys and you pick it i mean say we've got a group in this area of the country and you've got access to sounds like the best of the best, creme de la creme, when it comes to, to bike instructors and, and bike training organizations. Yeah, absolutely. We look at the demographics, and it hasn't changed a whole lot. You know, the the, the problem child, per se, is sport bike riders. You know, there's obviously, you know, big cruiser demographic and off-road riders, but unfortunately the fatalities are coming with the sport bike riders So, and the young guys, you know, typically under 25. So that's where we focus our efforts is, you know, with – we call it the Simper Ride program. That's what we do for the Marine Corps with Simper Ride is 
to be able to connect with those young riders credibly, you know. So we want to make sure we have relevant riders who can go out there and not just talk the talk, but do the riding as well to show them like, okay, this is how I'm telling you to do it. Now I'm going to go out there and show you how to do it. So they'll actually retain what, what they're hearing, what they're seeing. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it, we definitely look at what the, what the demographic is and, and try and target that specifically to. Do you get some of the, uh, some of the older Marines that participate in your program also, or is it primarily just the younger guys? No, it's, it's really cool. Especially like when we go and do some of the track stuff, it will absolutely have, you know, some of the older demographic out there on their cruiser bikes, riding around the track and, you know, dragging their, um, floorboard. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So yeah, we focus on the young guys, but no, every, you know, when we do something for the Marine Corps, so if you're it, motorcyclist, you're a Marine, Marines. you're welcome to the program. Yeah, absolutely. Male and female. Yeah, no, we have. Do you get a lot of females? You know, I'd say. It's a personal question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, no, we get probably 10%. There, there's definitely, you know, a large number of female Which riders. Which kind of mirrors this industry statistics as right. I see them. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we have, we open it up to everybody, you know. I'll, really, the only stipulation is you have to be a Marine. So, it's um, a good program. And, and, again, we're looking to do a lot more in the future. We've kind of figured out what works, what doesn't. So, you know, we're in the process of turning it into a, a sustained program, and, you know, hopefully we'll be doing this for a long time to come until there's not a problem anymore. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. I mean, we're uh, we're honored to have you here. We're really happy that just a mile from our studio you're mm-hmm. going to be doing uh, doing your camp on Thursday and Friday of this week at Miramar Marine Air Station. Yeah, we've done a lot of good work. You know, you can check out what we've done on YouTube. Uh, you can go to Simper Ride. Uh, two words to check out all the different events that we've done. You know, all the off S E M P E R. Yep, and the ride. next word is ride. Simper ride, which Simper is a play ride. off the the Marine Corps motto. Simper, Simper, Fi. Simper Fidelis. Simper so, Fi. So if it's Simper Fi, means uh, always vigilant, right? Always together. Always together. So, so it's like ride together. Or, yeah, or always, always ride, ride. Always ride together. So I like yeah, that. Mm-hmm. we're like Simper Radio here. Huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Simper talk. Simper talk. That, that's Brock. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brock. <laughs> well, Pike Week Radio Show is going on the road this week and next week. And special shout out Scott Burnworth putting together the third annual Carlsbad MX reunion, and that is Sunday, February eighth, at the Booze Brothers Brewery in Vista, twelve to seven. Just go hang out, grab a beer, booze responsibly. He had a birthday yesterday, Ride didn't he? First, he did. Hey, happy Burner's birthday. Burner's like, I mean, look at the picture. He and his wife. I saw Debbie. that on MySpace. I think he's like 18 Facebook. now. There you go. <laughs> at Burner, he's ageless. But yeah, and uh, we'll be there. Mm-hmm. We'll go there after San Diego. It's the day after San Diego Supercross at Petco Park for the first time. Military but, appreciation race. Ooh. There you go. Mm-hmm. Huh? And it all comes together. It, it does. It coalesces here in uh, our studio. So once again, Sunday, February 8th, day after Petco Supercross. Yep. Head up to Vista at Booze Brothers Brewery in Vista, 12 to 7, Carlsbad MX Reunion. But Number days three. before that. Mm-hmm. Coming up next, our guest, Dale Weston, Communications Director at Toyota Carlsbad, this Wednesday. This Wednesday. This Wednesday. The 28th of January. Mark your calendars. We are on the road at Toyota Carlsbad. we got a fun event. It's so let's give you some more details. Dale Weston will join us next right here, Bike Week Radio Show, San Diego Sports Leader, Mighty 1090. The excitement of Super Super Supercross is coming to Petco Park February 7th. To make sure you don't miss any of the action, come to Toyota of Escondido's 12th Annual Supercross Kickoff Event. Thursday, February 5th at 6 p.m. Meet world-class writers, Davey Millsap, Dean Wilson, Jeremy Twitch Denver, and many more. Plus, check out vendor displays from many of the biggest names in motorsports. It's all happening Thursday, February 5th at 6 p.m. at Toyota of Escondido's Giant. Giant Truck Center. While you're there, enter to win a pair of tickets to the races. Super, Super. Supercross is a Southern California tradition, and nobody knows more about getting you to the races than the action sports pros at Toyota of Escondido. For work or play, Toyota builds the best trucks around, and the truck pros at Toyota of Escondido know how to customize a tough truck to fit your lifestyle. Come join the fun. Thursday, February 5th, we're freeway close, where Highway 78 meets Broadway. Toyota of Escondido. Here's an idea. Bear with me. 
You could save quite a bit of money just by switching your motorcycle insurance to GEICO. Piles of it, in fact. But there may not be a lot of room on your bike for all that extra cash. So I had somewhat of an idea. You could get one of those nifty little sidecars, pile it up with all that money you just saved and merrily drive on your way. It's just a thought. Just off the top of my head. Call GEICO today for a free motorcycle rate quote. GEICO, saving people money on more than just car insurance. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys are the real deal. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. Their entire practice is dedicated to representing motorcyclists. As riders themselves, they understand why you ride, the issues you face, and the motorcycle culture. For over 30 years, Russ Brown and his partner Chuck Coro have been helping injured motorcyclists and their families get the care and compensation they deserve. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys also created BAM. BAM! A nationwide buddy system of over 2 million riders helping riders in the event of a roadside emergency. BAM offers free legal advice, and thanks to Russ Brown, they have staff on hand to take your call 24-7, 365 days a year. Imagine a real person answering the phone 24-7. Just call 1-800-4-BIKERS for more information and to get your BAM card today. If you go down, call Russ Brown, 1-800-4-BIKERS, and online at russbrown.com. The negotiation begins the minute you walk in the door, Frank. Jerry, I'm going to Toyota Carlsbad for my new Toyota. I don't have to worry. No, if... brother, walk in with that attitude. You're dead meat. Yeah, I don't think that's First the thing when you walk in, what? walk out. Jerry, You look... come back the next day, just walk right in, walk right out. <sighs> look, come back a week later, look him right in the eye and say... I'd like to buy a car. No, walk out. Jerry, does this explain why you don't own a car? You made me forget. Was I in or out? You're out. Walk in to big savings today on new Toyotas at Toyota Carlsbad. Toyota Carlsbad. This is Bike Week Radio Show with Bobby Waldridge, Brock Glover, and Paul Carruthers on San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back, Bike Week Radio Show, San Diego sports leader, mighty 1090. And as we were discussing in the break, we have a packed schedule for Bike Week Radio Show in these next few weeks. I love this week. Oh, it's a great week. I love San Diego Supercross week. Well, it's it's fantastic to be on the road and finally get to interact with some of our listeners because we're trapped in this little studio box. There's there's no windows to the outside world. We don't know what's going on out there. We're well supported. We've got a great group of listeners that we've accumulated over the last three seasons. And... um, I'm excited about hanging out Wednesday night at Toyota Carlsbad with our friend Dale Weston, who I think might be on the air. Yes, indeed. Dale, good morning. Good morning, guys. Dale, how are you? How are you doing? Good. I'm doing pretty good. We're at Lexus Estonia today making a a video, but uh, I'm always ready to answer some questions for Bike Week Radio. So you and I were spending a little bit of time together uh, a couple of days ago, Dale, and I've been telling these guys, the dealership I was familiar with because I'd been by there. I actually purchased a vehicle there. And, Fantastic. Uh, your service department is because we're we're nut and bolt guys. You know, we like to wrench on stuff. How sure. many service bays? I mean, it's it's staggering. This we this have over eighty facility. service bays. We handle uh, about seven thousand customers at Toyota Carlsbad service uh, a month. And the thing I really like about it is, as you and I become really good buddies, I'm going to leave some of my surfboards there because I can practically walk across That's the street. That's fine because you can just walk across the bridge and yeah. uh, surf Paramar. Yeah, really, really, really nice. Toyota You're Service You're ready to go. Department. Absolutely. And Wednesday night we, uh, we've we got food, fun. We're going to be making some noise. We'll be doing some interviews there. Bike Week Radio Show remote setup will be in play. And... We've got San Diego Supercross tickets, and these things are hen's teeth. These are, this is unobtainable. Yeah. We'll be giving away a few <laughs> few pair of San Diego Supercross tickets. So to our listeners, you got to be there. you got to come hang out. Look for Dale. Look for Bobby and Brock. And we're going to be signing people up, and somebody's going to be going home with some San Diego Supercross tickets. Yes, absolutely. And then we also have super deals on super uh, a big selection of Toyota trucks, Tacomas, Tundras, two-wheel drives, four-wheel drives, everything. We've got great prices on a great selection. Don't act like you're not impressed. Yeah, that's right. But we, uh, yeah, I've been following some point. of the new stuff. So you have the new uh, 15s there that I saw in some of the auto show. Uh, yes, we've got a lot of 2015s from not only the Tundras, but also with uh, Camrys, the new 2015 Camry, and the Corolla are there, as well as the RAV. We've got um, Santa County's largest selection of new Toyotas to choose from. 
and you reminded me that you know you're you're a local kid, and you've yeah, you've, you've I was been born involved in Tri City Hospital, Oceanside. So yeah, I haven't uh, traveled too far out of North County. And Dale, Dale's a moto years. guy too. He's a rider from way back. We had some some laughs talking about uh, our early days of getting riding and riding back. I mean, it was bliss living here, riding motorcycles as kids, wasn't it? Well, not? yeah, you know, back in the early seventies, mid late seventies, uh, the old Hang Ten Grand Prix was just on the other side of uh, Lake Calaveras, where I grew up. You could drive over to the raceway, Carlsbad Raceway, and watch the helicopters fly around and all the killer uh, motocross action by. Superstars of yesteryear. I think the local guy who was Brad Lackey back in those days. Yeah, Brad was there, and uh, Brock. You know, our, our Brock was our, there. Yeah, our host, who's up. Actually, he's. You know, we're doing the heavy lifting here. He's up riding brand new KTM's in Hollister Hills of all things right now. Oh, so, tough! It's probably good surf at Hollister too. So, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, Carlsbad is the home of action sports with yes, the skateboarding and then the motocross. So we love the, the fact that we can um, partner up with you guys this year. Looking forward to this Supercross event as well as uh, future possible events at sure. uh, our service center and all kinds of good stuff. So, Dale, give us the address. Where can our listeners go Wednesday night from 5 to 7? All right. It's right off Interstate 5. If you take Cannon Road exit, the actual street address is 5424 Paseo del Norte, Car Country, Carlsbad. That's 5424 Paseo del Norte. Right there in yes. the middle. You're in the heart of Car Country, mm-hmm. We are Car Country, Carlsbad. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Uh, they kind of built it uh, out from you. Yeah. You know, it, uh, Toyota Carlsbad started actually in 72 on Hill Street, Coast Highway, Oceanside, and then in 74 moved to Car Country when that was brand new. So... We were a little store back in the beginning because Toyota wasn't as popular back then. And uh, we're one of the survivors of the original dealerships from Car Country's existence back in the beginning. Toyota's kind of of gained in popularity, especially against the motorcycle racing fans. I mean, you go to a motorcycle race, you see Toyotas there. Yeah, yeah, the most uh, internet, and this is proven by Toyota nationally, um, most searched product on the internet for automobiles is Tacoma trucks. So very popular search. Uh, they can't keep up with the demand. So we had a meeting with the factory, I want to say two weeks ago, and the factory will be pushing out more product this year because the demand for Tacomas uh, is so is so high. When are we going to get to see those 2016 Tacomas? You know, they're really um, hesitant to give you actual dates. They just say coming soon. Um, <laughs> you know, they want to sell what's currently on the, on, on the lot first. So, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll probably make an announcement here in a few months. Nice. Hey Dale, what is, is there a new Toyota coming out that kind of, uh, goes up against the, the Raptor I've been hearing about? You know, um, I'm, I'm not sure. I know the TRD Tundra, um, that's what I'm driving the four by four, but as far as the Raptor, um, my brother actually sent me a, a, a hokey photo, funny enough, that you guys are asking. and I haven't found out anything about that yet, so it may be either t- too top secret for commercial advertising person like myself, because I'll go out there and blab about it. So I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't have that information about um, what the specs are, or if that's just a prototype. And but we'll be the a, first to know, right? Absolutely. As soon as I know, I'll let you guys know, because... Definitely anybody that wants to be off road and you know Ford. The Raptor's a pretty good truck, but uh, you know Toyota. You can ask Ivan Stewart; he, he's done enough yeah. with Toyota trucks. He kind of likes them. <laughs> well, we alluded to it a little <laughs> bit uh, earlier with Dale, but we are giving away those Supercross tickets, and the only way you can win them, the only, the only way. way you can win them. Listen up, right now you have to go to Toyota Carlsbad Wednesday, January twenty eighth, this Wednesday. And we'll be there from 5 to 7. We'll actually be there before that if you want to stop in before then. But you have to sign up there, and then we will announce the winner next Sunday right here on the program. So if you want those tickets, which I know you do because they are impossible to get right now, you can get Come them for us. free. Just go to Toyota Carlsbad, sign up, and we'll pull a winner next Sunday right here on Bike Week. And, Dale, thank you so much. We'll see you on Wednesday. All right. We'll see you guys at 5 Thanks, o'clock. Dale. Uh, Toyota Carlsbad, I five Cannon Road exit. Thanks and so much, guys. Thanks, online Bill. Toyota Carlsbad. Boom. That's right. See you then. Good thing. <laughs> yeah. See I you like then. Thanks. All right. Bye. Well, uh, Jeff, 
Thank you, man. You were fantastic. We, we got to have you back in. Yeah, thanks, guys. It's a you know, pleasure to come in again. You know, big part of the San Diego uh, motorcycle scene. You guys do a great job. Um, so, yeah, thanks for having me, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. And... Man, special. Not, yet, not really just Burnworth's birthday. I mean, Burnworth, we yeah, love Burnworth, you, buddy. But you are not our number show, one fan. My shoes are older than Scott Burnworth. <laughs> but I've, I've got to give, we've got to give mm-hmm. a shout out and a happy birthday greeting to our number one fan, Patty Askin. <laughs> my next door neighbor, my beloved mother-in-law, she's going to be 39 tomorrow. There you go. And we love her. Patty, we love you. Happy birthday. Cake. Cake and pie next week. Oh, over Pat, at the Pat Cox, Cox has got it going on right now. Chocolate, and, chocolate. Oop, was I supposed to say that? And, and also, <laughs> let's give a, a special shout out and uh, and a get well soon to our good buddy Paul Thomas, hero racing Julian Hard Cider, recovering from a, a brutal injury. He had a hard hit last night. A little uh, racing incident and uh, tangle with a car down in Baja, bringing the hero racing bike to the finish line. And Paul, we're thinking about you. He's in UCSD right now, but uh, his wife sent a nice text and said, you know, typical Paul, the spirits are still pretty high. Yeah, I mean, well, so so get well soon, and w- when you uh, are out and about, we'll bring you in studio and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll sure. drink some hard cider with you. Yeah. All right, that'll do it for Bike Week Radio Show. We'll be back next Sunday right here on San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty 1090. You've been listening to Bike Week Radio Show. Powered by Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Join us next week for more Bike Week Radio Show on San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090.